Between stagnant wages, debt payments, and increasing costs for most millennials or Gen Z, it feels nearly impossible to afford having children. According to the 2022 Brookings study, it costs about $311,000 to raise a child into adulthood, and that's not even considering the cost of college. As a millennial myself with two small kids, today I'm going to share the costs you can expect when it comes to having kids, ways to save money, and how we're making it financially work. Hi, I'm Marissa and welcome back to my channel where we talk about family budgeting and ways that you can budget, save, and make more money. And if that sounds like something interesting to you, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss any new videos. I've always wanted to be a mom for as long as I can remember and even more specifically, wanted to be a stay-at-home mom, but I know that having kids now is so much different than it was in the 80s or 90s when a middle-class family was living off of a single income. So we decided that we needed to financially prepare to have kids. I'm now a stay-at-home home mom to my three and a half and one and a half year old sons. And here's some things that you can expect financially if you are looking to have kids, or maybe you already have kids and you're just hoping to make this season a little less financially stressful. When we had kids, we experienced a change to our budget. And here are some of those things that you maybe can expect. First off, it's just kid expenses. We're talking like diapers, clothing, toys, anything that you buy because you have kids. For us right now, between our two boys, we spend $250 a month on these necessities. Now, some months this is higher and some months this is lower, but on average, we spend about $250 a month on these things. You can definitely spend less if you really want to though. Next up is life insurance. When you have kids, something extremely important to consider is term life insurance. If someone else relies on your income and you pass away unexpectedly, term life insurance is there to help support their needs. When we found out we were expecting our first baby, one of the very first things we did was look into getting term life insurance. Knowing that we'd have a child to financially support and also thinking about what would happen if both of us or even one of us wasn't there really put things into perspective. Now, some employers give a benefit to their employee for a certain amount toward life insurance, which is great, but it's also important to have life insurance outside of your employer because if you're no longer working for that company or lose a job, then your life insurance goes away. If you already have children, you know that this is a pretty major financial cost. And maybe you think what would happen if you or your spouse wasn't there. But if you own life insurance at the time that you pass, it can help ensure that your children will have the financial support to grow and live the life that you want for them. It often feels like life insurance has been confusing, expensive, and time consuming, but Ethos focuses on creating a seamless customer experience with an entirely online application process. And I also wanna thank Ethos for sponsoring today's video. There are no medical exams or blood tests and Ethos is able to cover people in a matter of minutes instead of weeks. You just answer a few health questions online and what I love is that Ethos is so affordable. According to Investopedia, every year you wait to purchase life insurance, your premiums could increase by eight to 10%. So the sooner you purchase life insurance, the more affordable it's likely to be. Term life insurance is great because it's so affordable and it helps those who rely on you financially should something happen to you while coverage is still in force. If you're interested in learning more about Ethos or getting your free life insurance quote, you can check out my link in the description box down below. Another way our budget changed since having kids is with college saving. I think that it's so valuable for us to be saving for our kids' future, but also I wanna disclaimer this by saying you should be making sure that you're taking care of your own financial future before your children. This means saving for your own retirement before you you are contributing to your kid's college. It's kind of like the whole airplane oxygen mask scenario. Put the mask on yourself before you can help someone else. We want to make sure that you are taking care of your own finances before you're helping someone else. But my husband and I were thankfully in the position of being debt free and working on our own retirement savings that we do contribute something to our college savings for our sons. The next thing is food increase. And this is hard as we've already seen increase in costs related to food. I'd say right now we spend probably an extra $200 a month with having little kids. My kids don't eat a ton of food, but they do eat something. And when you have a baby, if you decide to go the formula route, this could cost between $400 to $500 a month. Childcare costs, now this is the big one. Childcare can cost anywhere from about $1,200 to $3,000 a month per child. Or if one parent decides to stay home, this is an added cost as well because you are sacrificing an income. When it comes to the actual birth itself, this is another thing that you should plan for if you are looking to have kids. You might be hitting the max out of pocket for your insurance plan, which is something that happened to me both times when I had both of my sons. And also related to insurance, when you have children, you probably will have to pay more for insurance when you add another person to your insurance plan. Okay, now that was a lot 
of additional costs when it comes to having kids. But let's talk about some ways that you can save money. First off, you can buy things secondhand. Don't be afraid to do so. You can check out Facebook Marketplace or a consignment store or even ask friends for things that you can use secondhand for baby. There are certain things that I would still recommend buying brand new, like a car seat just for safety. But there are so many great things that you can get secondhand because babies use things for such a short amount of time that there are probably some low use baby items out there that you can get a good deal on. Another way to save money is to check with your insurance company to see if they offer a free breast pump. Most insurance companies have this option that you can get a free breast pump when you are having a baby. It may be a standard pump and you could pay a little more to get like an upgraded type of pump, but still check this out before you buy a breast pump. If you are planning to go the breastfeeding or pumping route, check with your insurance company to see what kinds of things they have to offer. You can also save money on diapers. I have never paid full price for a box of diapers. We always get our diapers on sale from either Target or Costco. Costco has their generic version of diapers as well as Huggies, and they run sales on these a couple times during the year, so definitely just stay on the lookout and stock up if you can to save money on diapers at Costco. Target is very frequently running a promo where if you buy a certain amount of diapers, then you get a Target gift card and in exchange. So it's a great way for you to save money on that cost and then use that Target gift card to go get other baby supplies or more diapers if you need it. Another way to save money is by creating a baby registry, whether that is at Target or Amazon or if there's others as well. The great thing with creating a baby registry is the completion coupon. Amazon and Target will give you a completion coupon that you can use to save money on anything else that you need to get on your registry. I believe that it is 15%. So you Use this to get the other essentials that you need 15% off. You can also have a baby shower or a diaper shower to get some of these other baby things gifted to you. I know this isn't an option for everyone, but if someone wants to throw you a baby shower, say yes. Another thing you can use to save money is in relation to childcare, and that is with the dependent care FSA. Check in with your employer to see if they have this option available, but with the dependent care FSA, you put money into this tax-free to be spent on qualified childcare expenses up to five thousand dollars so this is a great way for you to at least save a little bit of money by not paying taxes on five thousand dollars for that child care cost you can also utilize an fsa or an hsa for medical expenses whether that is for the birth or just ongoing things for little kids because you're going to be at the doctor frequently with little kids. I would also suggest working on paying off debt to open up more room in your budget. If you have debt, take a look at your budget and see how much those monthly debt payments are taking up space in your budget and how much more you could do if you didn't have that debt. If that's the case, work on paying off that debt as soon as you can so that you can free up more room in your budget to go to other things. So let me talk a little bit more about how we've made it work with being millennial parents. First off, we had a financial foundation, or at least we worked on this prior to having kids. My husband and I got married very young, right out of college, and we had over $80,000 of student loan debt combined, and we immediately worked on paying this off as soon as we could. We paid off all of this debt in about two and a half years, and then we worked on building our emergency fund, and we did all of this before before we had kids. We did all of this in about four years working entry-level jobs as we were very young and starting our careers before we decided to have kids. Another thing we did is that I became a stay-at-home mom, which saves on the childcare costs, but I also work when my kids are asleep. It's been the best of both worlds for me to be home with my kids, which I always dreamed of, but also provide financially for my family because we need more than one income. I make money through social media, like here on YouTube, as well as through bookkeeping. I have a degree in accounting and I utilize those skills to launch a bookkeeping business last year. And it's been another great income stream for our family to have consistent income. All of which I do from home on the side while my kids are asleep. I'm actually also launching a bookkeeping course coming soon. And I will leave a link down below for a free guide on what makes a successful bookkeeper if you've ever thought of being a bookkeeper and wanna see if it could be the right opportunity for you. We also just don't spend a lot of money on luxuries right now in this season of life with having little kids and that's okay we aren't going on a lot of vacations we aren't eating out a lot but life has many different seasons and I know that the season of having little kids is a huge financial sacrifice and we recognize that accept it and know that 
there will be other times where we will again be able to enjoy those little luxuries in life. While having kids has expenses associated with it, I would never want anyone to think that they can't have kids because of the cost. There are things you can do to make it more affordable and you may just have to get a little more creative to make it work for your family. But for me, being with my kids has just been so worth it. Don't forget to check out Ethos Life Insurance down in the description box below for a fast and affordable rate. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.